Okay, uh, so if you made it this far into the video, uh, thank you and continue watching. And I'm sure that everybody has been there. So you're really excited about this new firearm. You got all the goodies put on it, you know, the scope mounted, everything. Uh, I went over what I was super excited about, the 419 muzzle brake. Uh, I put a Picatinny on the bottom. Uh, everything just looks amazing and fantastic. And Berdera's got a great reputation, so I was super excited. And then, like, something happens and you basically lose all the excitement. As you can see, there's no bolt in here right now. So, Berdera is probably one of the few firearms that still recommends a break in process for the barrels. Uh, take it, leave it, I don't know. Uh, if you take it out from the box and you go to, like, shoot some groups and it's garbage, I would say go through the break-in. If it's not garbage, uh, congratulations, lucky you. I don't know. Uh, I'm so disappointed with what's going on with this rifle and maybe you guys in the comments, if you've had similar experiences, I know most of the reviews and, and everything I've seen on this Bergara is amazing. I checked everything, made sure it's tight. Uh, the bedding is tight. The scope mount is tight. Everything was torqued down with an actual torque wrench. Um, there's nothing that looks out of place. We did a, a break-in, but, uh, I mean, you guys, you, you know, right? Like, you're shooting 50 rounds at uh, uh, $50 a box, let's say, so 20. So you're spending $100, and what, all of a sudden, miraculously, as you're doing this break-in, it's going to, like, start grouping up? I'm a, I'm a decent shot, I know what I'm doing, but I'm getting these kind of groupings on the 147 ELD match Hornady, which is what it recommends for its sub MOA guarantee, or one of the rounds that it recommends, and that's like a two and a quarter inch grouping at best. That's, you know, there's another one. This is Federal 97 grain, like way down at the bottom of the, the, the target. Uh, and of course I'm always aiming for here, but I've got like, uh, you know, a cushion in the front. I've got good firm support. I've got a great scope picture. Nothing's moving around. And again, two and a quarter inch grouping. Then I fire two rounds uh, with a, a Nosler 140 grain. And I'm like, oh, these are my first two rounds, right? Like, oh, it's, it's coming along now. It, it's, you know, that's looking uh, sub MOA. And then the third round comes out, I've got a great scope picture, and it's way up here. So it just went from like a sub mm away to uh, a four inch grouping. This is the best one I could manage to get on a three inch grouping with uh, the Hornady Match 140 grain ELD, the stuff they actually recommend. That's the best one I could get. Ridiculous, ridiculous, and, and and disappointing, and I don't, I, I don't want to be disappointed yet. I, I've got some some things to try. So again, I double checked everything, made sure everything was torqued to specs and tight. And what I'm going to do, because I ended up going down the uh, intertube wormholes, what I'm going to do is uh, take the screws out and check on the inside for the bedding. Apparently, when they do these uh, paint jobs on the stocks, and they are like, you know, custom in that there is no two that are the same, there's some people have been uh, saying that they're getting a bunch of overspray on the blocks, and that'll actually make a difference. So, I'm gonna check that for overspray, and the other thing I'm gonna do is, although I uh, oiled and pulled a boar snake between rounds when I was break doing the barrel break in, I did not actually go full like crazy mode with the bore cleaner and some people have reported big uh, success, uh, great success by doing that. So I'm going to scrub the hell out of the bore, I'm going to check the, the, and I'll probably take a, so if there is a bedding, pay attention, stay with us, and I'll probably take a picture of some overspray of the bedding and then show like a before and after or whatever if I do have to do that. I don't know like at this point. But then, if that doesn't work, I'm through the break-in at this point, and I should be pulling sub M away. So here's the nice thing about Bergera. I haven't dealt with them yet, but everything I've read, the, the you know customer reviews, customer service, whatever, 
is spot on. So I'm going to call Bergera and I'm going to say, your rifle don't sub MOA as per guarantee. So it'll go back and they'll send me another one. But I've got a Ruger Ranch that I'm getting MOA at 100 meters with a 1.6 zoom. Like, and this thing, I can't get a sub MOA at 100 meters with a 4.16 on it? Like, are you kidding me? Come on. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I, I'm, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, we'll see what happens. And, and hopefully everything comes together and then I'm a happy guy again. But right now, I'm really trying not to get pissed off, but I'm headed in that direction. Anyway, uh, stay tuned and we'll shoot some stills. So I just pulled the, the receiver barrel and everything off uh, with the two bolts. And as you can see, I mean, this is just, I don't, I, a little frustrating. You would expect that they would know what they're doing when they're painting. Like, I don't know if they just hired an artist who didn't know anything about firearms or something, or just some kid off the street. But this is the, the where it beds, the rifle beds. And as you can see, there's paint splatter, like covering most of it. And you can see the wear in a couple of little places. So that's actually where the barrel is sitting. And same at the back. It should be sitting nice and even on those bedding blocks. And with the overspray like that, it'll never happen. Um, I'll show you the, the barrel part of it so you can, yeah, see, like there, there's, uh, this is what is going to fit into the recoil. This is your recoil block right here. So that fits into this part. Okay. And it should be a nice tight fit, which it is. But right behind that, as you can see like the little outline right there and you can see where it's, it's smooth in a couple of places means that it's not making full contact with that receiver. It's just touching on the left or right and the same back here where it screws in. So I'm going to take that off. That's what everybody said. Start there, clean the hell out of the bore. We'll go back to the range and hopefully this fixes it, but I'm kind of surprised. I'm really surprised in fact that they didn't clean that up from the factory. I just saw a guy like shooting a Bergera Premier and he's getting like 0.3 MOA. So anyway, all right, stay tuned. Back at what is turning out to be like a weekly event, which is going to the Cornwall Handgun Club and trying to get these things figured out. Uh, I have in front of me, you can see it, the, the sexy Bergera uh, chambered 6.5 Creedmoor, beautiful firearm to look at, aesthetically gorgeous, as you can see, topped off with a Bushnell uh, engage 4 to 16, so pretty good on the zooms. First focal plane, uh, locking turrets the whole nine yards. I got the uh, area 419 muzzle brake, Picatinny, and a scope mount. Everything has been checked. As you remember, uh, I did forget to actually torque down the screws uh, that held the uh, scope mount. So anyway, that's been retightened. Everything's been checked and I couldn't put three rounds together in what I think should be on this, a clover leaf. Okay, couldn't do it, couldn't, impossible. I'd get two pretty close and it would be a flyer and you'll see it, it watch the other videos to see what the, the plates look like, but it was garbage. And uh, this went, if you watch my first video, this is my dream gun, right? Like I did the research on this, I was so anxious, I waited till it was in stock. I was so like excited like a kid on Christmas day to have this, and now it's frustrating me because this thing should put like a, a, a clover leaf down there. It, there's no reason. Like I've got plenty of zooms. Um, I'm using what they recommend, uh, not for the break-in, but this is what they're recommending: the Hornady Match uh, 140 ELD. Fantastic ammo. Okay, I've seen the results, uh, and at $55 a box, I hope so. Something I added to it recently is a maglock uh, bipod. I'm hoping this really works out. I love it. I've seen a lot of people use it. It's got the little pivot. It locks in, mounts on the Picatinny. It's, uh, it's beautiful. So we're going to really try and man, if this doesn't put three rounds together in a close pattern, this better be sub MOA. I mean, the conditions are ideal today. There's hardly a breeze. It's gorgeous. There's a little bit of humidity, but that's fine. If I, if I can't put three rounds together, it's going back to Bergera. That's all I got to say. It, it's going to end up going back. Um, 
I was just looking at the inside of the muzzle brake and I don't know, uh, it almost looks like there's copper scoring on one side. But anyway, uh, I'll check that out afterwards. Anyway, so it's been scrubbed down clean. Uh, I did take apart the receiver action and there was, as you saw in the video, uh, overspray. So that's been sanded down. It's a bare metal mount now. It's torqued down to spec. It should be all right. We're gonna see. Hey, we advanced to the uh, target. This was my warming round or my scared the shit out of me round. I was just trying to take up the slack. This is one and two and three are both in here. I mean, that's, that's just outside of an inch. If it continues like this, I'm a happy guy. Uh, we're, I'm gonna go back and shoot a couple more. But if this is, is where it's gonna be now, inch, sub inch, after a couple more shots, maybe it'll you know, I'll get better at it as well because there's a lot and we're, of... And we've only fired 20 rounds out of it. It's not broken in. 30 probably. 30. 30 probably uh, rounds out of it. Anyway, uh, much happier with that. Cool. Okay, so uh, I just looked at the match ammo I was using. It's actually 147. I want to cite it on the 140. This is the stuff that's recommended. So this is the 140 match ELD. Uh, Gonna do another three round grouping. Let's see how this goes. Ah, oh, it's so smooth. So smooth. Hey, success! Look at that. Uh, I did call a flyer. If you watch the video, you. You would have heard me. Uh, I said, yeah, I pulled that one. So I called the flyer there, but I mean, that is a three quarter inch MOA. Sub MOA. I guess the break in, the removal of the paint, good sight picture. Uh, now I'm happy with it. Okay, so I take back all that. Well, I don't take back the frustration because uh, uh, it was uh, a genuine uh, article to be frustrated with, but this thing should and is shooting like it's supposed to. All right, so I just wanted to wrap up basically, uh, cause in this video you're gonna see um, kind of the build a little bit, things that I did to the Bergera to get it where it is now. And uh, I'll just, uh, summation. So bone stock B14, uh, wilderness terrain. What I, and if you haven't checked out the original video when I did the unbox, uh, I was so excited about this firearm anyway, it was, like my dream firearm. I did a lot of research on it, made sure, you know, that it was the caliber that I wanted, et cetera, et cetera. So I was very excited to have this firearm. All the reviews that I saw of it, people were praising it up and down, basically saying it's what Remington, the new Remington 700s should have been. So uh, my take on putting a scope on a rifle, okay, you have to match the application. Whatever it is you're gonna use it for, make sure you have an optic. I mean, there's no sense in spending $5,000 on something that you're gonna probably, maybe you're gonna use as a bush gun. But this rifle, I thought, I'm gonna set it up that I could kind of do some precision long distance shooting, but, uh, you know, and, and hunting application as well, because I thought about it would be a great coyote hunter, uh, not something I wanna lug around in the bush, because as I mentioned before, it's pretty chunky. It's like 9.3 pounds like stock, and now with all the accoutrements on it, and the, the beautifulness that I've added to it, it's certainly much more than that. It's probably like at 11 and a half now. So the scope is not super chunky. It's not a great scope. It's a Bush, Bushnell engage. It's a four to 16, matches perfect for what I wanted as far as zooms. And then area 419, you can see the uh, scope mount, uh, the Hellfire uh, muzzle brake. You can see way out there, sexy, sexy, sexy looking thing. 
And then uh, on the bottom half, you can see the Picatinny rail that, that takes away those uh, sling swivel studs. So I've got a mag pull. I think I call it a mag something else. Anyway, I, I've got a mag pull. I wanted to try out their bipods. Uh, my impressions of them so far, I really like them. They kind of seem like they might be flimsy just because of the material. Okay, and of course, firearm is safe, okay. Um, I wanted to make sure that it matches up with what I thought as far as expectations, but it, it does have like an aluminum inside. Uh, that part is an aluminum, and you can hear it. And the outside is plastic. So it's seen, you know, it's got nice rubber feet on it. You can uh, put it however you want. It's adjustable, it pivots, even if you loosen this nut here on the bottom, it can pivot a little bit. So if you're sitting on uneven ground, that comes in handy. And it's also got this big rubber pad on the bottom too. So if you're firing from a barricade, you can rest that on it. And so you don't have plastic sitting on a, a hard object as well. So uh, excellent bipod so far. I really, really, really like it. And yes, of course, there are other ones out there that are uh, nicer maybe, more expensive maybe, I don't know, but I really like this bipod. I had accuracy issues, you can see it in the video, and I was getting so frustrated, I was like, when you spend, you know, 2000 plus on a rifle, and you're setting it up for a purpose, and it's not matching your expectations, I was so frustrated. I was like, what did I do? Like. Why is it like this? And so I immediately thought, well, it's got the sub MOA um, guarantee, so it shouldn't be a problem, even if I can't fix it. But of course, I, I'm a do-it-yourself kind of guy, so I wanted to research as much as I can, see if I can come up with some kind of solution. So there's a couple of guys out there, and I'm buying in on this as well, okay? The, the sub MOA guarantee that are provided by a lot of the firearms manufacturers uh, how do I put this nicely? Uh, bullshit. Okay. It, it's pretty well bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay. Cause it's what you can get out of the rifle. So if you're not a good shot, you're not going to get sub MOA. If you don't have a good setup, you're not going to get sub MOA. A sub MOA guarantee, read the fine print for this particular rifle means at some point, they were able to put it out on a sandbag with the ammunition that they recommend and shoot less than an inch grouping at 100 meters once. That's all they got to do it is just once. Three rounds, two, by the way. And a lot of them won't count the first round, like the warming round, which is if you're hunting, that's kind of the important one. So I read that and I'm like, well, you know, maybe the, all the stars aligned, whatever. We were out there for, and you'll see the, the shooting video. You can see it wasn't overly windy. In fact, I would say the, the conditions were ideal. It's a beefy barrel. It doesn't heat up. So I'm, then I'm like, maybe the stock is touching. So, you know, I did the uh, envelope uh, float stock check and it checked out fine. So it wasn't touching there. And just back up a little bit, you'll see where I cleaned up the uh, mounting uh, points on the inside of the receiver, which I thought I shouldn't have to do that, right? Like you guys should be checking this out. A little quality control on your product before you shoot these out the door, pun intended. Uh, before you shoot these out the door, you should be checking to make sure that you're looking at bare metal and that everything is. So anyway, I cleaned that up and uh, thank God the grouping tightened up because what I was getting before, and I showed you these these plays before. Okay, so this is with like the Hornady 147 ELD match. They recommend the 140, but I mean, like it's the match ammunition. And that is, uh, I mean, that that's, that's a two and a bit grouping. That's ridiculous for a $2,000 setup. I tried some Federal 95 grain. And again, there's your three round grouping at the very bottom. You guys have seen this already. And that is, Again, a two and a quarter grouping. I would get two that would like look like they were gonna group up, you know, like that. And then I'd squeeze off the third round and it would be like that. I don't mean to give you guys the finger. I'm not doing that, but it, it's just the finger that works best, if you know what I mean. Um, and then this one here is about a two inch grouping. So maybe a little bit better, but a two inch grouping, 
a two inch grouping on a sub MOA guaranteed rifle. I was getting really upset. And then the same thing with this. I went over, I was shooting Nosler 140 grain, really good ammunition. I put one on top of the other and I'm like, all right, it's gonna group, we're in, excellent. And then I fire the third round and I didn't call it. I didn't say I got a flyer or that didn't feel good. I had a good sight picture, everything. And that's my round. And I was like, man, what is going on? I felt like I was shooting a, um, the Remington 783, which by the way, the video is coming up on that too. Uh, we're probably gonna shoot it tomorrow. I don't know when you'll see this, but it'll be after this video. Of course the clock goes. And then finally, anyway, like that was pre, all these, all these uh, shots were all before I, I took the uh, action apart and cleaned the mounting post. And then finally, and you'll, you'll see in the video, you can hear me on the fifth shot or the fourth shot or the fifth shot, I say, I pulled that one. And I knew it as soon as I pulled it. So, and my brother was watching, and I mean, that is about a three quarter of an inch group. That's my little, I don't have a battery for this. So, I mean, I locked it in at one inch. So it, even if you include that, I mean, it's still an inch and a quarter, but this is probably a three quarters of an inch group. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm done. I'm done testing it to see if it can shoot. Now I know it can shoot. So I guess my moral to this story is be patient. Uh, if you're putting the money on a good product, for instance, the Burger, for instance, the Remington 700, the Tika, the Tika shoots extremely well. I think I actually have, uh, and this is like my, you know, my brother's, he, he's got the Tika. He's never had to do the barrel break in or anything. I had to shoot 50 rounds through this thing before it's apparently ready to group. But I mean, that is a one inch group three rounds uh and you know i, I don't i don't know why the 4k I, I i don't know what's going on but anyway it's a one inch group he was shooting the tika and uh i think he was like not even shooting that great of ammo he was shooting like the federal um the tika doesn't seem to really bother it doesn't bother now what i will say though about all this ammunition so you know, I've got it set right now for the Hornady uh, match 140 grain. It's zeroed in. Um, there were some adjustments after this, but this was the best grouping I had with this. And then if you look at where the other ones are shooting, okay, there's the 147 grain. Okay, so it's about two and a half inches uh, high and right, and maybe an inch and a half right. So keep that in mind. These are good, I, I like to keep these because if I decide that I'm going, let's say coyote hunting and I wanna shoot you know, 95 grain because I don't need to shoot 140 match. So I go down my little pie plates and I see what's available at the store and I find myself my federal 95 grain. Now that, this stuff shot really weird, um, low and right. So I know that I am uh, three and a half, four inches low so I can adjust my elevation on my scope. Okay, I'm gonna make my adjustment on my scope. All right, and then I know that I am the center of the group, if you can find a center, but the center of the group is about two inches right. So I can come two inches left and bring it up, and I know that I should be rough zero uh, on this. And then, you know, with a good, with a decent scope, uh, you can put the zero stops in and you know you're good to go. And then when you're done shooting the federal, turn it back to zero and you should be set up again to shoot your 140 uh, grain. So anyway, what I'm saying is that don't give up. I, I was getting so frustrated, you guys. You saw the video. I was like, you know, it, it's unreal. I was really thinking about selling it at, or just like starting from square one. The Bragera is a fine rifle. I love this thing now. It is my dream rifle, okay? This is exactly, I built it to exactly what I wanted, which is uh, a precision, long range. Um, you could try a little marksmanship with it for sure. There's probably better rifles than this, but this was inside of my budget and I built this thing around a budget. 
you, if you spend three times as much, you can have three times a rifle. But this, I think, will stand up to any of those, in my mind. Uh, maybe just a little, a few more zooms on the scope. But anyway, uh, I love the feel of it. The action itself is like butter. Uh, very easy rifle to shoot. With the muzzle brake on the end of it, you feel zero recoil. Again, you're not going to feel that much recoil anyway with a, with a 6.5 Creedmoor, but there it is. So guys, this is probably like part three. And uh, if you're in the market, you want to spend about, I'd say, let's say $2,200 Canadian. Okay, this is the setup you can have. All right, shop around. I got this scope regularly at 750 bucks US and I paid 340 for it because it was on clearance. So there's nothing wrong, it's last year's model. I don't care, I don't care. It's not like, it, you know, seven years that it has a birthday every year and that it's too old to use, I don't care. So anyway, there's some bargains out there, check them out. Um, I will say that when you receive a brand new rifle, if it is a, a colored synthetic stock, you don't have to worry about it. I would still check the barrel float. But if it is a painted stock, you do want to check the, uh, take the action apart, take the receiver apart, check your mounting pillars. My brother, if you saw the video, he's having problems with his uh, Remington 783. He actually did the same thing and he found a lot of overspray on his pillars. It's got aluminum pillars and it's like paint all over it. And he said one of them was like loose and so even though he was clamping down on it with the torque, uh, that paint would be sliding back and forth a little bit, unless your recoil lug fits in there like snug as a bug. Mine, there's a little bit of play. Not, nothing I would not say is excessive, but you could always do a bedding, and, I, and that's what I was considering doing. So anyway, $2,200, probably about $1,400 US, and you get this, and this is amazing. All right, guys? Uh, drop a comment, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, I really love hearing from everybody, uh, especially all over the world. I'd like to know what you guys are running, what is available to you, what you can find. And for $2,200, what is your go-to long range hunting slash uh, precision uh, rifle? I am the guy with beer, guns, and gear. I hope you have a fantastic day. I know I did.